It's Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday, cruisers. I'll say it. Hey, cruisers. Happy Friday. It always feels really weird if I do an intro that is not Hey Cruisers and I have to come back to it. How's everybody doing? So good to have you here. Tonight's episode is brought to you by our awesome sponsor, CruiseLine.com and Shipmate app. Have any of you guys checked out their couch cruising series. It is so good. I am on their email list, so I get couch cruising updates. They're fabulous, they're wonderful. Now's a great time to check out cruiselane.com. Set a price alert on your next cruise. So we've been having a lot of fun tonight in the pre-chat. Everybody's telling us what's in their glass, how their week was, how they're all doing, and it's just been really nice. It feels so good that the weekend is here and we're going to celebrate this Friday night tonight with the, the making of a brand new cocktail. It's called the Rebellious Fish. It is, a, um, it is a cocktail that is unique to Norwegian Cruise Line. So I'm gonna pull up my recipe and we're gonna just jump right into making this sucker because I've had a long week at work, a good busy week at work, which is great for the economy. That's what we wanna hear, but I am feeling Friday. I was working right up till 5.15 tonight, you guys. Like, woo! Good thing I don't have a commute right now because it was a little bit tight. So let's talk about what's in the Rebellious Fish. Um, the Rebellious Fish is um, Pessoa passion fruit liqueur, vodka, triple sec, prosecco, orange juice, and fresh berries. However, welcome to um, small town country life where you can't find Pessoa passion fruit liqueur within a 30 mile radius of one's house. Um, I do not have a BevMo or even like an Albertsons that's really good driving distance right now. So we don't have the passion fruit liqueur. And we're gonna sub tonight with a little bit of passion fruit LaCroix and some extra vodka. So if you found passion fruit liqueur out there, let me know in the chat. I wanna know where you got it and if you got the Pessoa brand. But I do have vodka. I am subbing triple sec uh, with Cointreau. I do not have triple sec and I, I, everybody tells me Cointreau is a step up anyway, so we're totally fine. So we're gonna we're gonna do this thing, you guys. Are we ready to make a cocktail? How you doing, Mr. Crucifix TV? How are how is everybody doing in the chat? Good. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask, and Mr. Crucifix TV will kind of keep an eye on them. John B said that Brenda already jumped the gun on making it. It's pretty good, so she did. And Brenda had to find herself a passion fruit swap out as well, I understand. Michelle, I'm glad to hear you're going to Alaska next year. Hi, Anthony Simone, good to see you. Peggy, yes, extra vodka. So let's do it. Hi, Shannon, somewhere in Missouri farm country. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. You guys are on a road trip right now? That is super fun. All right, let's get our cocktail on, woo! Oh, Natasha, I don't have my bar cart in the set. It's actually all the way across the dining room, um, but it's made life so much easier just to keep all my glasses stored in there. And then getting ready for this, I just grabbed everything off the bar cart. It was great, Natasha, I was so stoked. So we're gonna start with a cocktail shaker tonight, guys. Yes, we is. I am gonna pull up the recipe here. So the first thing you're supposed to put into your shaker is of course passion fruit liqueur, which we don't have anything, we don't have any. So I'm just gonna pop some ice in my shaker. Mr. Christmas, are you on the little camera? Or are we still on the original camera? Okay, sounds good. Cool, all right, so I'm just dropping some ice into my little shaker here. Not using my hands, I should just use my hands. I'm in my own house. I've washed my hands 752 times today, as I'm sure all of you have as well especially because I was running around going to multiple grocery stores trying to find ingredients, which was a terrible idea, didn't work out. All right, so we've got the ice in the shaker and now we're going to, it calls for 0.75 ounces of vodka, but since we do not have our passion fruit liqueur, I'm gonna go with a little bit more. So I think I'm gonna go with about an ounce and a half. Maybe I'll kind of double that. We're also not making multiple cocktails tonight, so Sherry can have a heavy pour. There it is, guys. Oh yeah, looking good. There is my Tito's. I love Tito's, it's really good. Doug at Cruise Radio turned me on to Tito's. So yummy. Okay, what's next? All right, so we got the vodka. Now we're supposed to do a quarter ounce of triple sec. I'll go a little heavy on that pour as well. This is the Cointreau I'm using in place of the triple sec. I'm sure you guys are substituting tonight too. Eh, it's probably a little more than a quarter ounce, but that's just fine. Nobody is going to hold me to it, right? You guys are not the cocktail police. We all know how I pour around here. 
<laughs> and now we're going with two ounces of orange juice. I think that's a little bit much. So I'm gonna go a little bit less than two ounces. And then, this is a simple one to make, you guys. It's just really, really easy. We're gonna shake, pour it in a nice glass full of ice, and then we're gonna top it with Prosecco and LaCroix and some fruit, and it's gonna be done. Jennifer Snowden said, how long has it been taking for Royal Caribbean refunds and onboard credit? You know, Jennifer, I think they're on the 45 day, around the 45 to 60 day mark, if I'm not mistaken, um, for Royal Caribbean, but I would double check with Matt at Royal Caribbean blog, just to be sure. Nicholas Muzial said, great work as always, Cruise Tips TV. Thanks for the great content. Nicholas, thank you so much. Hey, it's absolutely our pleasure. Thank you for being here and letting us get creative during this crazy time. Let's talk about how Brenda Beretti made substitutions in her drink. She said, we found Kinky Pink, which is a mango, passion fruit, and blood orange liqueur. You live outside the second largest urban area and the Pessoa was a no-go per the NCABC board. Really? Oh my gosh, that's crazy, Brenda. I can't believe it. Shannon says, pour it on. You guys drive safe, Shannon and Steve. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. yes, Isabel, we're going with the heavy stuff. Okay, now I'm going to fill my glass with ice. This used to be a frosty glass. It is not any longer. My frostiness has kind of gone away, but I wanna put some kind of, I made some sort of ice chips, and I wanna kind of fill this with more of the ice chip style ice because I just love the way it tastes. All right, there we go. A Little bit of ice chippage, and yes, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, a little bit of ice just hit the floor. I'm gonna get that, guys, because the last thing you want is ice on hardwood floor just sitting there for a long period of time, right? Oh my gosh, yeah, Melanie, I always do find a way to get the LaCroix in. <laughs> That's true. Okay, so I they said to garnish it with the fruit, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and pour first. There we go. Oh, it looks just like the picture. It's the same color, even though we didn't have the passion fruit liqueur. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and put in my frozen fruit. I chose frozen raspberries and blueberries because I always put frozen fruit in my cocktails. So we'll see how this looks, but I'm pouring it in. We'll see if it looks like the, oh no, I don't think it's gonna look like the picture. And I think my blueberries are kind of, because they're frozen, I think the juice is kind of pouring out of them, so it may change the color a little bit. And now we're going to top it with my Kirkland Prosecco that we featured in the um, tea party last week. I love this little stopper, and I've been keeping it all week, and have, I've had a few sips of it throughout the week. Not much, as you can see. It's pretty full, um, but the stopper keeps it nice. So we're going to top it with a bit of Prosecco, and we're going to top it with a bit of LaCroix, and I actually think a tiny bit more ice. And here, my beautiful friends, is the rebellious fish. Not quite as pretty <laughs> as the picture, but it'll do. I'm gonna give it a little stir so we can incorporate. I've never had one of these, but I've heard it's quite strong. Of course, when you double the, um, the vodka content, of course it's quite strong. One of these days, though, I really need to find that passion fruit liqueur. Okay, let's give it a taste. Those of you who are making it at home, let's taste along together. Oh, Janice Gregory, what a good idea on the brisk iced tea passion fruit. I was looking for anything passion fruity today, guys. Anything. Okay, let's give it a taste. Here we go. Mmm. Oh, wow. That is so good. The orange juice makes it really nice. Yeah, this is definitely a chillin' on a, on a beach chair on a cruise type of a cocktail. Wow. Mmm. Sydney wants to know, when is our next Cooking With episode? Sydney, I'm not sure, but I have decided, guys, that I'm gonna go live next Saturday. So next Saturday is, at, and I believe it's gonna be at 1 p.m. Pacific, the 23rd, which is Memorial Day weekend. So Saturday, save the date, probably a cooking show next Saturday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on the 23rd. Mr. Cruz TV is like, oh, I didn't know that. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you that. <laughs> I figured it might be nice to kick off the Memorial Day weekend with a little cooking episode. Um, Sid, I've been wanting to, um, I've been wanting to make the fire roasted tomato soup from Carnival's Sea Day Brunch. So I'm thinking about doing that. I wanna welcome a few people who popped in. Julia Miller, hello, Julia. Zen Kakuji, hello. Glad you're looking forward to it. Daniel Fields says, hey, thank you for the cruiser of the week. We dug it. Yes, congratulations, Daniel and Nancy Fields were our cruisers of the week last week. Mike and Cheryl said, how's the beard going, Mr. Cruise Tips TV? 
quite full, I would say. It's full right now, guys. I mean, it's like, it's in. It's not hanging down or anything, and it's very nicely groomed, but it's full, and I love it. I think it's soft and sweet, and I just love it. I, if he had, uh, like I said before, I know I told you guys this last week, Mike and Cheryl, but had he told me he was gonna do it, I'd be like, oh, ugh. But I haven't seen him with a beard in probably 10 or 15 years, so I just kind of um, forgot what it looked like. Oh, Miguel Espinoza is here. Miguel said, happy Teacher's Day. Today we celebrante teachers in Mexico. This is a particularly special time as the whole country moved to online classes. Shout out to everyone protecting children and teachers. Miguel, first of all, I would like to say that you have a beautiful way with words. That was very eloquent and beautiful. And yes, we absolutely celebrate teachers in Mexico and in the United States and in Canada and all over the world, let's make it World Celebration Day for teachers because my goodness sakes, what they're going through right now. And um, John and Brenda, tell Ian that this is for him. Cheers to you, little buddy Ian. Glad you joined us tonight, bud. You'll have to tell me later what's in your glass. Yes, Seth, I will be the official bartender of the Hot Tub Club. Move over, Seth. I've gotten a promotion. You used to be the official bartender. Well, no, you're the president. You couldn't be bothered with bartending and serving the little people. I'll handle that, no problem. <laughs> so funny. Oh, is this your long weekend in Canada, Jackie? Okay, so next weekend is ours, I think. Oh, Roxas Midoria. Hey, oh, hey, TARDIS, got you. Thank you for the super chat. And you got my attention with that, with that super chat. So good to know who you are. Thank you, thank you. All right, Alfred Inglesby said, tats and guys burgers, wow. So you're going out, growing out a goatee, huh, Seth? Michelle Ann DeGroote said, is LaCroix like bubbly? Never had LaCroix, yes it is. In fact, I had never had bubbly, and then I went on an airplane and they offered me bubbly when I asked for a sparkling water. And that's how I discovered it, and I actually kind of prefer bubbly to LaCroix, but it's identical. Um, Atladea once said, do they make the rebellious fish uh, drink on the cruise ships? I'm ready. Yeah, it's a Norwegian cruise line cocktail. This is the first one that we've done from Norwegian and it's really good and it's really easy to make. Um, even without the passion fruit liqueur, it's wonderful. Mmm. Holly, what a great tip. Holly said your favorite liquor store will order the passion fruit for you. Excellent. Very good. Mike and Cheryl said, Seth has peons to do all the little people work. So for those of you who aren't familiar, we've got to fill them in, guys. Um, there's many people who are in the chat tonight who have been very longtime friends of Cruise Tips TV. Our channel has been around since 2013. And tons of people who are here, Mike and Cheryl, Seth, Jim Ring, Natasha, lots more people. I'm not, I haven't even tapped the surface there, um, have been with us for a long time. And Seth sort of um, coined the phrase hot tub club. And he even went as far as to make t-shirts that say hot tub club on them. It's kind of a fun cruise related, you know, it's like it's like an inside joke, but it's not. It's everyone's, it's everyone's joke that's here. So welcome to the hot tub club. Seth is the president. I am the official bartender. I love slinging drinks. It is my newfound favorite thing to do, which is absolutely and totally not a healthy skill to develop during a stay at home order, but I'm going to own it because it has happened to me. Um, I will also repeat that I am not drinking excessively during this time. Um, maybe one extra drink per week. My husband's probably over there going like, are you sure about that, babe? Um, I bought you a bar cart for Mother's Day. But it's, it's, I'm not. It's just I'm having more fun with it. I'm stocking my bar. I am actually not just drinking gin and grapefruit juice. When I have a cocktail, I'm making new things. And I'm doing it with you guys, and that is... It's, it's so fun. It's been saving me. It's been a total joy. And I know it's ridiculous, but you know, it is what it is. I don't like that saying. And I just, it just came out of my mouth. It is what it is. Um, have I been doing more cooking? Um, have I been getting more exercise? Yes. We've also been doing all of that. I go on wonderful walks every day on my lunch break. They are sometimes rather rushed, but sometimes Junior gets to go with me if he's not in the middle of school and I have this precious time with my family, and yes, we've been making more home-cooked meals. And to be honest, we're all probably a little healthier right now in general, just because um, we're not rushing around as much. I'm not commuting, we're making home-cooked meals, um, we're spending more time together as a family. I am sleeping more because I have more time on both sides of my day, so yeah. Daniel Fields has a drink tip for Norwegian. He said the matador is good. John Anderson is here. I welcome John. Paul Billis said, what is a good recommendation for first time cruisers? Please. Paul, do you mean what cruise line or what ship? 
Um, I would recommend, Paul, that you go to our website, cruisetipstv.com, and take our cruise line personality quiz. Um, in fact, I'll put it in the chat for you uh, right away. I missed a super chat from Bill Bayungo. Bill Bayungo gave you a super chat, babe. He said it's for your Diet Coke. Thank you, Bill. Mr. Cruise Tips TV is nodding very, very happily. Um, do you want me to get that cruise line personality quiz, or did you already start looking for it? You didn't. Okay, I'll get it right now. I'm going to grab that for you. Um, by the way, guys, we posted a really sweet article today on our website about how Barbados is providing support to the cruise industry. So if you go to cruisetipstv.com, you'll see it right on the front page. It's a really beautiful story. Um, the Aida Perla made a, the captain of the Aida Perla, who's this awesome, jolly, bearded man, so great. He made a thank you, um video for the island of Barbados, and it's actually very emotional, so I do urge you to do that. Bill Bayungo, Mr. Chris Tips TV just went and got a Diet Coke. Wanna come over and show them your beard really fast? Oh, I tried. I tried, didn't work out. Um, anyway, it's a beautiful article, go check it out. And also new on our website, an article about dollar store shopping. It's so fun. It's so fun, I loved writing it, and it, we've got photos of all the things we found at the dollar store. I know most of us can't go to the dollar store right now, but I am going to, for Paul, Paul, here is your cruise line personality quiz coming into the chat. Paul, I don't know if you're still here. I'm gonna try to tag you. Yes, you're still here, Paul, I found you. Okay, cool. Mike and Cheryl said, beard cam. I know, we've gotta find a way for them to see your beard. I don't know how we're gonna do that. We'll work on it. Lori Epps is in the house. Hi, Lori. Lori said, I just discovered your vlog a couple of weeks ago, and this is my first visit to a live video. I love it. Lori, that is wonderful. Thank you so much. I love it when we have someone new in the chat who isn't afraid to speak up and say that you're here. Lori, we welcome you. We are such a kind and nice community. Everyone here in the chat is warm and welcoming, and we're just so glad that you're spending your Friday night with us. Hope you had a great week, by the way. Um, Debbie Solomon said, do you know anyone who's gotten a refund from Princess? It's been over 60 days, and when I called, they would not commit to a date. I got the future cruise credit part weeks ago. Debbie, I do know someone who got a refund from Princess, and it's me. Um, however, my cruise was canceled in February. My April 2020 cruise was canceled in February. It took three weeks for um, me to get the, the, um, the refund. And the future cruise credit shows up on your booking, but I never saw the future cruise credit. My travel agent could see it when she put a deposit on a future cruise, which we're not gonna go on anyway, but I know it's there. So, all right, Jillian Williams said, did you already do a video on packing for an Australian or Singapore cruise? Kinda Jillian, kinda. We did a video on carry-on only packing for a 12 night cruise from Tokyo to Singapore and it is an excellent video if you're a minimalist and you would like to pack a little less maybe do some laundry on the ship it does encompass two weather systems because in Tokyo it was cold 40 degrees and wintry in Singapore it was hot balmy and 80 we had to pack for both and so if you just go to our channel go to um, videos and type in packing Asia it'll come right up um I don't think beard cam exists tonight, Isabel. I don't think he has that camera set up the, because the other cameras are over here for the drink making tonight. Did we even go to the second cameras tonight? Probably not, just one. All right, Melanie, you're still waiting for your refund from Holland America. Hopefully that's coming soon. Yeah, 60 to 90 days is on the, on the bigger end. I'm hoping that they get them out in 45 days. Vernon already got his future cruise credit for his March cruise, and that was a princess cruise, right, Vernon? Daisy has a birthday in the house. Happy birthday, Daisy. And Seth has a birthday next week, guys. Wish president of the Hot Tub Club, Seth, a happy birthday for us. Natasha, girlfriend, I am with you. I cannot wait until we can start cruising again. So, Bill, you said that your dollar stores are open. No, Lisa Burrow said that their dollar stores are open. You're... Not the only person who's told me that. That's very interesting. Um, oh, man, John. Okay, John is scheduled, you guys, for a Royal Caribbean cruise that leaves on June 30th. Now, we're all sort of waiting with bated breath to see if, um, if Royal Caribbean continues to extend their cancellations because they're actually sailing 
inside of the CDC no sale order. The CDC no sale order is lifted on July 24th. So of course, John and anyone else who's booked on Royal Caribbean is like, whoa, what's going on here? Are we actually going? But he said that they got notification to print their luggage tags. Wow. Yeah, Jillian. Yep, I know what you mean about the packing. Aw, everybody wants a beard cam, sweetie. Aw. <laughs> Seth, you're so funny. Dollar stores are open in Ontario, Cheryl. Really? I did not know that. Maybe they're open as essential businesses everywhere. Okay, guys, I have an assignment for you. I need you right now. Um, so there's 173 people in the chat. Do I have your attention? Do I have your attention? You guys know that song. Do I have your attention? I have a question for you. I'm writing an article and I'm collecting data to find out how when cruising resumes, how do you want cruising to change? Um, we posted a, a post on our Facebook page and have over 200 comments on it. Some of the things people are saying that they want to see change are deeper sanitation, um, less touch points, more touchless systems. Um, I had a very interesting one that I love came in where um, it, that was pertaining to the crew. They said they wanted to see, what they wanted to see change is they didn't want crew crammed together in rooms. So they wanted every crew member to get their own stateroom. I thought that was beautifully thought out. So please guys tell me how you would like cruising to change when cruising returns. Now look, I'm not saying that, I'm not suggesting that cruising has to change like crazy. Things are going to change though. I wanna know what you wanna see change and I want to take this data and, and really, really, we're gonna analyze it and look for trends and we're gonna create an article about this that's gonna go out to the whole world. So make it good guys, make it good. Jose Duval said, I just did your cruise and I'm a princess cruiser. Yes you are Jose, I'm not surprised. Hisham Farhat said, Sherry, do you think I should cancel my cruise in November for Odyssey of the Seas? Personally, I don't think you should, but that's a very personal decision. I would wait to see if they cancel it for you, but I would love to see you going on that. Beverly said, the dollar stores are open in Texas. Wow. Michelle said, no more buffets. Okay, all right. I'm going to be looking at this later. I probably won't read a ton of them. I'll read a few of them but I'm going to analyze everything later and write it all down. Okay, yeah, Vicki, no more gross shower curtains, let's go for glass shower doors. Deb and many other people are saying, please, no self-serve buffets. I find that very interesting. I, I thought that many of you would not want to see your buffet go, but it has been quite the contrary. People have actually been way more um, prone to say, I want to let the buffet go. I want to let that buffet concept go. I don't want to touch those nasty tongs. I don't want to think about the lady who just picked her nose and touched the tongs. I want the buffet gone. Very interesting to me. Natasha, yes. Natasha said they need to have the medallion system on every cruise line. Natasha, I was thinking about that today. The ocean medallion, the princess product that is touchless is way ahead of its time. And it's an excellent, um, technology, and I would love to see it spread through the industry, hopefully at least through Carnival Corp now, right? All right. Nancy C. said, in one day, my August dream cruise got canceled. You lost your job of, as of July 1st, and another negative thing happened. The only thing that really upsets me is the cruise being canceled. Nancy, I'm so sorry. Hang in there, Nancy. I hope everything gets better for you, and you will be booking another cruise, my friend. Crazy dog testing said, hello, it's Amy. Wondering what you would do if you went back to Cartagena, Colombia with Junior. Trying to decide what to do with our boys ages 8 and 11 by the time we go. Thanks. Hey, babe, would you do the carriage ride again in Cartagena with Junior? It was fun, huh? He liked it. The bathroom was a problem. Okay. Crazy dog testing Amy. Amy, we did the carriage ride. Um, if you watch our vlog, you will find out that I desperately had to pee pretty much as soon as the excursion started and there were no bathrooms. And we had to stop for a bathroom and it was horribly embarrassing. Um, the only thing I don't like about the carriage ride and the tour is that there is no bathroom availability for a solid two hours. I, any morning excursion, if I've had a huge cup of coffee, I now look for is there a bathroom on the bus? If there's not a bathroom on the bus, my bladder, and that excursion, we ain't friends. I ain't going anymore. I'm an old lady. Um, I drink a lot of coffee and it was a buzzkill. However, 
I would definitely recommend it with the kids. Just don't feed them a whole lot of, don't give them a lot of liquid before the, the excursion. But it's nice because it's a good variety. So you take a little bus tour, you get to the walled city, they put you in one of the carriages, the crazy clowns pop out, and then you get to do some shopping. And it's pleasant. Um, it's very hot in Cartagena, extremely muggy and hot. So please do keep that in mind when you're booking something is that you're gonna be outdoors and it's very humid. But it's a nice, I think it's a nice fun thing to do with the family. I don't have a lot of things to um, compare it to. I haven't done any other excursions, Amy, in Cartagena. Hey guys, guess what I just noticed? We're getting normal cruise questions tonight. Yay, normal cruise questions are questions that are any question pertaining to cruising that is not, do you think my cruise will happen? Which I don't have the answer to. I want to have the answer, but I'm really happy that we're like talking about cruise stuff. This is so great. Stephen Ames said, what would happen to the cruise card? Stephen, I'm assuming you're talking about the Ocean Medallion Princess's product. Okay, so you don't have a cruise card anymore. The medallion is a wearable. It, it, your cruise card is um, replaced by the medallion. You use your medallion to open doors. You use it to buy drinks. You use it to do just about everything. You can, you can do a ton. Now it's compatible with a, a variety of different apps that you can use on your smartphone and it's really cool. So anyway, I know at Ladeo said no buffet. Isn't that part of the whole cruise experience? Personally, I've never had a problem. I say keep the buffet and wash your hands before you eat. There's gonna be a lot of hand washing. It's gonna be required. That's faux show, right? <sighs> Anthony Simone said, I don't like clowns, and you felt that that was something you should put on the screen. Mr. Cruz is to me, he's having fun tonight. Is our audio okay, sweetheart? You guys, he still has post traumatic stress disorder from our audio problem at a tea party last weekend. So give the man a little love. Um, yes, Roxas Midiora, it's very much like the Magic Band. Oh my goodness, we have a very generous super chat in the house tonight from Stephen Eddy. He said, love the cocktail chat. Thank you for all you do, Stephen. Thank you so very much for the generous, for the very generous super chat. Welcome to the Cruise Tips TV live stream fun. We are, uh, sadly, we're not doing this enough right now. I think we need to go live more like two times a week. So what do you think, Stephen? Two times a week? What does everybody think? How often do you want us to go live? Chris Barnett said, do you think we'll have to wear masks in the beginning? Chris, I think it's possible that the CDC may require it. The cruise lines may not. Right now what's happening is that all of the cruise lines are presenting their comprehensive plans to the CDC to be considered for when the no sale order is lifted. I think the CDC might try to force masks. Very, very, very unfortunate in my opinion. I probably would not want to do that. I'm having a really hard time just wearing a mask to the grocery store and in and out of my office every day, not every day, the days that I do go in to do essential work, I'm very much struggling because I feel like I cannot breathe. I hate them, I can't, I can't. So it would be a problem for me. Paul Billis, what a wonderful idea. How about an outdoor theater on ships? I absolutely love that idea. We have another super chat from a very dear friend who has followed us for a long time. Kay Kraut. Kay said, great job. Thank you, Kay. Thank you for the super chat and thank you for your loyalty. We see you. We appreciate you. I know you've been around for a while. Um, what's up with the clowns comment? Clowns in Cartagena. Oh my gosh. How did I not pick up on that? I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't get that. If you don't, yeah, if you don't like clowns, don't do the, don't do that excursion in Cartagena. What? They are pretty annoying. They were very annoying. Hmm? Like a mime, not a clown, more of a mime. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And they are annoying and they beg for tips and it is annoying. Okay. Jim Ring with a question. Alaska, June 30th, 2021. I booked a port balcony out of San Francisco. Is port or starboard a better location? Okay, Jim. There are diehards, Jim. There are diehard port or starboard people I personally am not one of them. I believe that you will be fine on either side. However, um, a lot of people do like the port side because you get to be on the port side. 
Sometimes, not always, but um, don't worry about it. You're going to be fine. On Glacier Day, obviously, they're going to flip the ship around. We have a new subscriber in the house. Bruce Wilson just hit the subscribe button. Bruce, hopefully, a nice little thing popped up on the screen thanking you for subscribing. Thank you. If you subscribe during a live chat, guys, you get special props. Yeah. Sasha A said, nope, no mask. Think about that tan line. Sasha, have you seen the meme circulating this week about the new tan lines with the, with the mask? I know I've seen it a few times. It's really funny. Okay, Corey said, stricter time for embarkation to cut down on the crowding. Yeah, I think they're going to stagger embarkation pretty big time. Without a doubt, Corey, that's going to happen. You're going to see a lot of crowd control happening, guys. You're going to see reduced capacity in shows. Um, you're going to initially probably see um, dining rooms will not be fully occupied at any one given time. So you're going to see empty tables probably between you and another person. There will be social distancing on ships in the beginning. It won't last. I can almost guarantee you it will not last, just like it won't last in Vegas, just like it won't last at Disneyland or any other theme park or on airplanes, which are already on the airplanes. As you all know, if you've been watching the news, they're talking about that middle seat being left open. Mm -mm -mm. If they sell that flight, there's somebody going in that middle seat already. It's already happening. So, just saying, it's not just the cruise lines that are, you know, what? You just look at me like, wow, she's on some soapbox right here. <laughs> Sherry's going off. Hey, it's Friday. I get to go off. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, I know there's lots of great comments coming in, so I'm just kind of scanning. What is this cool room you're talking about, Lori? Oh, wow, John. John likes the way the water flows on the starboard side. Well, every, see, I'm telling you, everybody has their preferences. Oh, my goodness. We have another subscriber, Alyssa. Welcome. Thank you for hitting the subscribe button and for joining the Cruise Tips TV family. <laughs> Daniel said, we booked our first aft balcony on the Royal Princess. Really looking forward to it. It's a wraparound. Holy cow, Daniel. That is the dream. If you can get an aft wrap, you are loving life. The wind is much more minimal at the back of the ship, A, and the wrap view, of course, is quite stunning. I mean, you're going to see the side and you're going to see the back, so you kind of have a 180 degree view. Maybe not a full 180, but you have a pretty good, pretty good view. It's pretty nice. Very cool. I'm jealous. My gosh, it's been a long time since we've had an aft balcony. Since Carnival um, Splendor, I think. We need to do that again. Yeah, okay, so Lori has a tip, guys, for Alaska. She said, for Alaska, for the balcony, it depends if you're going north or south. She said she likes to be on the side closer to the shore for most of the days. Yeah. Yeah, Mike and Cheryl, I think we do have a lot of Canadians in the house tonight. Sasha said, how do you think social distancing would work with pool chairs when people grab a few for their party? Oh, boy. Sasha, I think what they'll do is they'll cluster them. They'll do their best to, to cluster them. So what I mean by that is you'll have like, okay, you'll have like a group of three here, and then they'll put a big space between them, and then they'll put another group of um, pool chairs in trying to just encourage that so that, you know, the understanding is that two or three people may, may take a cluster of them. But I think they'll probably try to do that. And then what they're going to do with the um, pool chairs, which we know because Princess Cruises has already announced this, is that they're going to have more frequent sanitizing of the outdoor um, furniture, which was not really something that they did a whole lot before. Um, Isabel said, I'm somehow worried that travel and cruises will no longer be fun. Too many rules. Isabel... I think in the beginning, there's going to be some truth to that. And I think that um, the, the silver lining, Isabel, is that we have to remember that the cruise lines will not book to full capacity, most likely, when cruising resumes. So you may feel a bit more restricted on a ship in the beginning, and there might be more rules, but you're probably also going to be dealing with less people. People also are going to have more open hearts right now. They're going to be like, okay, maybe some more rules. We'll kind of go along with it. I think the cruising population is going to adapt beautifully. What we have seen in the last two weeks is that that is not so much the case on airplanes, that people are freaking out about being crammed into the smallest 
places of airplanes, they want their own space, they're at times being denied their own space, and they're getting angry and psychotic about it. I worry more about things like airplanes where you don't have a choice. You can't spread out and get away from people. But I think, I think cruisers are pretty mellow, and I think we're going to be okay. Also, I mean, we're going to go through probably another really big wave of, I don't know, contagion spread this fall. If that actually does happen as it is to be expected, we're not going to have... We're not going to be able to forget about this virus very quickly, right? But within a few years, within 18 months, two years, however long it takes us to get this under control, things are going to relatively go back to normal. I do really believe that. Um, and I do, I truly believe in my heart, Isabel, that travel will become safer. The cruising will become better. There's going to be a lot of things that actually do improve as a result of this. I know it's hard to see that right now. For me... It's so hard to see it, but objectively, when you stop and think about, think about it, I really do believe that there's going to be some positive change. Um, you know, I mean, when we all look at travel and we look at what trip you're going to take, what's your first trip going to be? It is going to be the one where you feel that you can relax the most, where you can spread out a bit, you can have a little bit of space. I think that, um, that cruises... It's, it's going to take longer for people to get back on cruises. People are going to be trying hotels. They're going to be traveling domestically within their own countries. And they're going to be going to resorts a little bit more where they can spread out on a beach and they don't feel crammed. But cruising will, it'll be back. And it'll be back with the, with the vengeance. Sashimi Cat said, I wonder how the cruise lines will handle COVID safety after port stays as far as coming back on the ship. Well, you know what? <clears throat> they're going to have limited ability to do much other than make you wash your hands, sanitize your hands, and limit what you bring on in general. Oh my goodness, our buddy Scott is here. Hi, Scott. Scott Fairs, <laughs> America. Yes, Scott, I know. Yesterday I was wearing my red, white, blue um, tank top. I loved it. I felt like I, all the 4th of July festivities are going to be canceled this year, Scott, but I'm still feeling patriotic. Um, anyway, you guys, Scott is... Um, a He created and organized a massive group effort for the first Carnival Panorama inaugural sailings, the, the short and the long one. He created these beautiful commemorative coins and medallions. He has a, a Facebook group. He's got another group cruise coming. Scott is a panorando, a true Carnival Panorama lover. He's a great friend. Good to see you, bud. Sasha said, thank you. What do you think about hot tubs? There's essentially zero social distancing in that. I wonder if those would be closed altogether. They might be, or they might actually limit how many people can be in a hot tub. Um, Deborah Wyke said, cruise industry is constantly getting slammed. What's that, honey? With the hot tubs? You don't like hot tubs anyway. He's like, close them, I don't care. Deborah said, cruise industry constantly getting slammed. Yep. People um, love to hate. It has probably been the worst part of this whole situation for me has been not going psycho mama bear on all of the cruise haters out there. The biased media. Um... There are a lot of beautiful stories, though, and we're just doing everything we can to highlight the beautiful stories and share them where we can, but it's it's horrific the way that the cruise industry is being treated. Um, I, yeah, I mean, and the, the twisting of the facts is just what makes it so difficult for me um, to get my head around. What? Huh? They're looking for a scapegoat. Mr. Cruise Tips TV said they're looking for a scapegoat. Yes, they are. They would love to believe that cruise lines were the source, the spread, the cause of all of this, but the truth is they weren't. Um, the disease rates on the ships were incredibly low, considering how many people were cruising at the time that the, the outbreak occurred. I mean, the percentage points are so low. It's dizzying. Um, I'm hearing a new trend that's very intriguing, and that is that crews, the crew who are stranded on the ships, by the way. Oh, yes, they're stranded. L please listen to Doug um, Parker's podcast today, his wonderful interview with a cruise director who was stranded on a ship. Guys, this is what the, cr the staff is saying about being stuck on a cruise ship. They're saying, look, the, a large majority of them, not all of them. I'm sure many of them want to get home. Many of them were saying, look, we actually felt safer on the ship than we 
do or did getting off the ship and potentially having to now enter the land of the virus. They felt isolated and safe on the ship. And now they're worried about potentially grabbing a germ on the way home to their beautiful families, whereas they felt contained and safe on the ship. Anyway, whoa, I just went off. Michelle Endergroot said, drives me nuts how the media is blaming the cruise ships. They didn't cause the virus. No kidding. Miguel Espinosa said, you're absolutely right. Planes were bad to begin with. No social distance whatsoever. I guess that worries people the most when cruising would be possible. Yeah, planes are filthy. I mean, I, I get way more concerned about sanitizing my uh, tray table, every the arm of the chair, the seat belt, because I know I knew for a fact that no one was sanitizing any part of that airplane after every flight. I'm sure they sanitize it on occasion, but certainly not after every flight. Cruise ships are some of the most heavily regulated and clean places to travel. The problem with cruise ships is that they are tight quarters. You are in a space with. Um, a lot of people. And so if some, if an outbreak occurs, of course there can be spread. Of course, especially when the local authorities don't let you off the ship to go to a hospital or out of the ship where, where you belong. So yeah, we got, oh, I could go on and on and on. Wow. Sorry guys. I'm going on and on and on. Yeah. Jenner's Patters Cruising Channel. I'm way more concerned about that too. And Roxas Midioria, I get sick on flights all the time too. hundred percent. And I'm not saying I hate flights. I mean, it's just that it's just so unfair. Um, the, the bias is horrible. Um, Paul said, do ships have coffee bars to meet interesting folks? Yeah, Paul, they do. The coffee bars don't tend to be super great places to meet people. Some of them have like nice sit down areas like Princess Cruises cafes have some nice sit down areas where you could meet people. Um, but the bars are probably good piano bars. Um, uh, the, but the coffee bars can be nice. They can, they can. All right, guys, we are going to get going here pretty soon. It's dinner time. Um, I'm going to answer just a few more questions. Michelle Birnbaum said, do you think there will be cruising next summer or only when there's a vaccine? I do not believe that a vaccine is the, is the, um, gateway to travel. I, I don't believe we're close to a vaccine. Um, I don't believe that it will be fully effective. And I, when have you ever seen someone be mandated to have a vaccine to travel? If influenza vaccines were required to travel, what would the world be like? Um, did we ever get a vaccine for SARS? Did we ever get a vaccine for bird flu? Ask yourself those questions. So no, I don't think a vaccine is going to be the answer at all. If it comes, great. Will everyone take it? Absolutely not. Um, no, they won't. I would much rather see a treatment. Of course, a vaccine would be wonderful for at-risk people but I'd much rather see a really solid treatment. Mary Ellen Dillon said, people talk about getting sick after a cruise, but I bet it's those who need to fly to the port. Yeah, totally. And I'm sure, and I'm sure that people do get sick on cruises all the time. You're going, you know, you're touching things. You are potentially not washing your hands as much. You may have experienced a high level of stress before your cruise. You are going into ports where you're being less cautious. You're, you know, grabbing a drink from the bar in a third world country and then sticking your hand in your mouth or touching your face. Touching, I mean, think about all the things we do. I do, the, I do that stuff all the time. I'm not saying I don't, but there, it's not just cruises by any mean, means. NJ Kamkuti, I always ask you, you never respond. Where do you get your clothes? You have the cutest stuff. Well, I'm sorry, NJ, I apologize. Um, I get a lot of my clothes from a wonderful subscription service called Fashion. It is um, a styling service that's very affordable and I will give you a link. I also like to shop at Macy's in the petites department. I get a few of my clothes on Amazon. Um, on occasion, I shop at Old Navy. Where else? Target. Yeah, I love shopping at Target. But here's my fashion um, link and you can actually, if you, you get $10 off your first box at fashion, you can actually tell them, I like Sherry at Cruise Tips TV's clothes and they know what that means and they will help you. Um, I did a live, we did a live video interview with the president, um, the founder of fashion. Her name is Matali. And um, she said that, they, that people do ask, actually say, I want Sherry's box 
of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> they will do their best. It's really sweet. So very interesting. Amy Rogers makes an excellent point. Amy says, after 20 years, there's still not a vaccine available for HIV. Finding vaccine is not a guarantee, and I don't want to put my life on hold until they do. That's very, very beautifully said. Thank you. Vicki, thank you so much for the good night wishes. All right, guys. Um, Kay Kraut said, any special cruise gear videos coming up? Yes. Okay, I have an unboxing coming soon. I have um, two Target Beauty boxes, and we also have a FabFitFun, and I have this new Pura Vida uh, necklace that I got that I'm gonna be talking about. But we just also, um, last week, posted a review of the Glocal Me Mobile Hotspot. So if you're looking for more techie stuff on cruise gear, go check that out. Um, Paul Billis said, can you send postcards from a ship? Yep, you sure can, just take them to the front desk. What'd you say? Target. Oh yeah. Here's another thing about what that's going to be on a cruise gear. Guys, right before the stay at home order, two weeks before we went and filmed an episode on shopping at Target for a cruise. Well, it's fully edited and it's ready to be published, but we didn't want to publish the video when people couldn't shop. We felt that it was insensitive to post something when it's like, here, go find all this stuff at Target. Psych. Can't go to Target. <laughs> So we're going to, as the states start to open up a little bit more, um, we're going to post that Target video. It's done. But lots of fun things happening on our other channel, youtube.com forward slash cruise gear. You're welcome, NJ, camo, cutie, Y. You're welcome. All right, guys. We are going to go make some dinner. Jim, I'm going to make Mr. Curtis Hoops TV wear a romper all weekend, I promise. Seth. I know you're his romper soulmate, so I expect you to wear yours this weekend as you pre-celebrate for your birthday. You guys, thank you so much for being here. Please join us next Saturday, 1 p.m. Pacific time. I think it's probably going to be a cooking show. Maybe we'll do something before then, too. Um, if we have any significant cruise news this week, we will film a cruise news-related episode. Please keep an eye on our website, cruisetipstv.com. We're doing a lot of fun stuff over there these days. Entertainment over there, information and news. All of those things are happening. But thank you all for being such a wonderful community. I'm going to go enjoy dinner and the rest of my rebellious fish. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Good night. Cruise of the week. Hey, click me to subscribe.